video is all about flight mode and your mobile network settings and I will be demonstrating on my Samsung Galaxy Note 2 okay so let's get started so if you go to your settings and you click on more settings right at the top here you'll see flight mode now you can turn flight mode on by ticking this box here and it will give you the option to either go ahead and enable flight mode or to cancel it so if we click on OK if you give it a little while as you can see flight mode has been ticked and flight mode is now enabled okay now as you'll see a little aeroplane symbol has appeared here in our notification bar now this lets you know that flight mode has in fact been enabled so what exactly is flight mode well, just as the name suggests, flight mode is designed for safe use of your mobile on an aeroplane. What it does is turn off the wireless radio parts of your device, as radio transmitters are not allowed on aeroplanes. So with flight mode on, you can still use other features on your mobile device during a flight, such as listening to your music player, um, having access to most of your system settings and apps, as well as pre-installed games in your device, as long as they don't require an internet connection or data usage so in this mode you cannot make or receive calls or messages either and that's the reason why you'll notice here that your mobile networks option has been greyed out however it's worth noting at this point that some airlines do not authorize the use of phones at all even if they are in flight mode so check with the airline before you fly and decide to use your phone on flight mode okay so I've disabled flight mode so we can talk about mobile networks so if you click on mobile networks you'll see a list of options here so let's start from the top with mobile data okay now as explained in previous episodes mobile data is the data used when you access the internet using your sim card service provider and not your Wi-Fi so if you want to connect to the internet solely using Wi-Fi so you don't get charged for data usage untick this box here to turn it off alternatively if you have set a data usage limit with your sim card service provider as I've shown in episode 6 which shows you how to cap your allowance so you don't go over allocated data allowance then you can turn your mobile data back on because once you reach your cap it will automatically turn off okay now the second option you have here is data roaming which again can be turned on and off by ticking or unchecking this box here now data roaming basically lets you connect to your mobile phone network when you don't have any signal on your mobile phone so if you tick this box when you don't have any signal on your mobile your phone will roam to find another network to allow you to connect to other service providers so basically you can continue to make and receive calls and texts and access your mobile data now generally this is useful for use when you're um, using your phone abroad but it is important to note however that data roaming charges can be really high and if you do go abroad use this with caution as your network service provider may um, charge you high cost for using this option and you are actually given this warning if you tick on this box here it does give you the warning it says allow data roaming it asks you as a question and it says you may incur significant roaming charges so we just cancel that now anyway so um what I would recommend instead, what I do, is I turn both data roaming and mobile data off when I travel abroad and I just use Wi-Fi in the area. Um, alternatively, you can buy a new SIM card with a data plan from the country you travel to. Um, I'd say both are far more cost effective ways than using the data roaming option. Okay, so now let's talk about access point names or APN. Now access point names are basically the settings on your device that identify the external network your phone can access for data. Now that may be a little difficult to understand so let me demonstrate by clicking on it. Okay now this is a screen that you'll see internet and MMS. Now MMS stands for multimedia messaging service and is basically the system that allows your device to send and receive pictures and sound clips as well as text messages now you shouldn't need to do anything with this option 
So, um, for instance, my data service provider is Orange. When I put my SIM card into my phone, all the work was basically done itself. The settings for both my internet and MMS were automatically set up on my device. Now, on older devices, you get these settings via text message when you're sent internet and MMS settings and you're asked to accept them. So, if I click on either of these, as you can see here, um, the settings are greyed out so they can't be edited. If you click on options here, you can discard the settings. Okay, but I wouldn't recommend doing that <laughs> unless you have settings on here from a service provider you're no longer with, in which case I'd understand if you wanted to discard them, but I wouldn't do that. Okay, so if you go back to here. Um, so if you go back onto this screen anyway and you click on options, you can see that you can add new APM okay and you if you click on it like so okay this is what you'll see so you can actually import new settings and import details for a new APN and you also have the option here to reset to reset everything to default so that's okay so you also have the option on here oops exit to reset everything to default so if you do end up making a mistake, if you just click on that, it will restore your default APN settings and everything will be working exactly as it was originally. Okay, so now let's go back onto the mobile network screen. Okay, so here you'll see network mode and if you click on it, you're given three options. GSM WCDMA also mode, GSM only or WCDMA only. Now, which one you should you choose and why? Well, let's talk about GSM and WCDMA. Now, GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communications and WCDMA stands for Wideband Code Division Multiple Access. Now, the most simplified way to think of it is GSM is 2G and WCDMA is 3G. Again, you might be wondering what that means. Well, 2G basically stands for second generation technology and 3G stands for third generation technology. Now, there are big differences between the two. 3G networks, for instance, are faster at downloading data and for browsing the internet on your mobile phone. It also gives you faster download speeds, faster access to data and applications um, than 2G would. 2G networks are also less compatible with the function of smartphones. Now, the main function of 2G technology is making phone calls, while for 3G, the main function is data transfers. Now, 3G's main features like mobile TV, video transfers and GPS, they aren't available on 2G. 3G technology is also more secure than 2G. Downloading and uploading speeds in 3G technology are also higher. Now, this may make you think that it's best to choose the WCDMA option as 3G outsides GSM 2G on features and benefits. However, a drawback of 3G is that it simply isn't available in certain regions. So if you're, a so, sorry, so if you're in an area with no 3G support, then your phone will have no data signal whatsoever. However, if you're in an area that you know has good 3G signal, then picking WCDMA only will save on power. Now, personally, I believe the best option is GSM WCDMA Auto Mode, which lets the phone automatically select the best and normally the fastest data connection that it can pick up in the area you're currently in. Now, even though this option uses more power than just picking one, either GSM only or WCDMA only, I think it's far better to choose both because that way then you can ensure that um, you're getting some sort of connection at all times so you're not at a point where you don't have any signal whatsoever okay so lastly you'll see an option here for available networks and when you click on this option your phone will basically automatically um, scan for all available networks. Now you shouldn't really need to use this option as your phone should already have automatically done this when you first put your SIM card in. However, just to show you what can be done here, if we wait for it to finish searching, it does take a little bit of time. 
Okay, so that's finished scanning there, and what you'll see here is a list of available networks. Now you can either click on your network provider. So if you see your network provider here, so for, for instance, if you were with Vodafone, you'd click on Vodafone, or alternatively, you can click on Select Automatically, and it will select whatever network you're on. Well, that's the end of episode 7, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or would like me to review an app or explain any features or settings on your mobile device, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get a video out. Now, I will be making more episodes, so please subscribe to my channel for my up and coming videos. Thank you for watching.